All righty. So next we're talking about heart tones here. Um, heart tones is something that this is probably one of the more important ones. Uh, I mean, they're all important, but like this is a like a, a basic one that you got to really like be able to have down pat. So when you call the laborist, they can trust when you say, hey, this is a category one strip that they know that, you know, it's a category one strip. So um, we won't like heart tones can be a whole lecture by itself we'll just take a few minutes here but real quick review so what makes it category one strip so moderate variability which is how much variability yeah so six to 25 baseline is what baseline is 110 to 160. do what about accelerations yeah, it doesn't have to have accelerations, uh, but but could have accelerations. What about early decelerations? They're okay. What about variable decelerations? No variables and late no late no late decelerations. So baseline one ten to one sixty, moderate variability could have earlies, could have axels, but no variables, no lates. Category three. Uh, we won't talk about the details of category three. Think of category three, really bad sinusoidal or absent variability with a few other uh, things. And then basically everything in between is category two. So um, now for the sake of what you need to know for uh, being able to describe a good or a problematic strip for the OSCE review and for uh, uh, just being on the floor in general, um, prolonged bradycardia is what? I know. So how, how do we define prolonged bradycardia? Okay. Yeah, so greater than two minutes, perfect. Yep, less less than 110 for, for greater than two minutes. Obviously, there's a big difference if it's 105 for two minutes versus if it's 50 for two minutes, right? There's a big difference on, on how you're going to communicate that and what you're going to do about that. Um, how do we, and then definition of recurrence, either variables, recurrent plates, what does that mean? That's a with more than half the contractions uh, over a 20 minute period. Yep, uh -huh. so so that would be important to be able to communicate uh, recurrent variables, recurrent lates. Um, knowing the exact definitions of an early deceleration, a late deceleration of an axel in the, for the axel at the different timings between whether it's before 32 or greater than 32 is important. So real quick review. So axel before 32 is what? 10 by 10. So, right, the axel starts, it gets up to at least 10 uh, beats per minute above the baseline, and then it finishes at least 10 seconds from the start. It doesn't have to stay up 10 beats for the entirety of the 10 seconds. It just needs to start, get up there, and finish at least 10 seconds later. If it's greater than 32 weeks, then it's 15 by 15. Um, early deceleration. How do we define an early deceleration? Like, hits the deer. The yeah, so it starts with the contraction. The, the nadir, the lowest point of the D cell, is at the peak of the contraction. Um, and it is a gradual, uh, from the onset to nadir, is gradual, longer than 30 seconds. And it doesn't talk about the, the resolution of the, of, of the D cell, but usually it resolves with the contraction. As opposed to a late deceleration that starts after a contraction starts, the nadir is later than the peak of the contraction um, and then resolves after the contraction as well. Um, and then a variable is more abrupt. So, um, but, it, but it has to, the variable has to last at least, if you look in the red book, it has to be at least 15 seconds. Cause sometimes you'll have just like a teeny little blip as like, not exactly sure what that is, but if it doesn't last 15 seconds, then it is less worrisome and, and not as important to communicate. So, uh, so prolonged bradycardia, recurrent variables, recurrent lates, knowing your definitions of category one, two, and three, and then knowing your definitions of uh, your axles and decels. So, questions about that? All righty. And then I think for the sake of the OSCE, you don't have to describe like, like you're not going to, you're just going to be describing the strip and not necessarily describing all of the intrauterine resuscitation measures that you would be doing at that time. Is that right? You kind of say what you would do. Say what you would do. Yeah. Okay. So re real quick, we'll, we'll kind of say what we would do. So what are some options uh, if we, if we're having heart tone issues? Our tones don't look great. What are, what are some options? 
they on pit? So if they're on pit, you could stop the pit or cut it down. Yeah, you kind of, that that's that's more of a uh, gestalt thing of yeah. like uh, how bad does it look? How much pit are they on? How long have they been on pit? That type of thing. Um, so stopping pit, you're on pit. Reposition. reposition is a big is is like the thing that you've got to make sure that you're doing is repositioning uh concept start a bolus yep and check the cervix make sure that they didn't go from four to complete and they're ready to have a baby uh that can happen quickly so yeah so that's the first three things you do check the cervix check the cervix check the cervix i mean not three times but just make sure you don't forget that um and even if the nurse says she was just checked oh yeah oh should we just checked her 15 minutes ago uh, they can change quickly so um what else could we do that probably doesn't make a difference but we do it for the sake of doing it and give them uh oxygen via non-rebreather and then if they're having a recurrent variable then what else can you do and ambient infusion right so um those those are our options for if we're having having heart to an issue so i would say in that order the way that we we usually would do it would be obviously check the patient uh, but then as far as like the intrauterine resuscitation measures, we're going to be repositioning the patient, starting a bolus, putting them on oxygen, um, and stopping the pit. Um, once again, it depends on how bad the tones look. Like if they've been in the 50s for two minutes, then you're doing all those things at the same time. But you don't necessarily, just because you have a, a D cell doesn't mean you necessarily have to start to pit, stop the pit right away. You could you could try those other things uh, first. So questions about heart tones? comments about heart tones or you know i think just making sure to speak uh, clinically and not say um uh, not using casual terms like <clears throat> like looks okay you know like actually say yeah like one yeah this this would not be the time to say oh yeah this trip looks fine or this trip looks good like you need to like use your words that you have fit like it's like when you're describing a derm thing, you know, you gotta use your specific <laughs> words that you've been taught. Um, and I'll say same thing with the with shoulder dystocia, like calling out the exact mood, like knowing those names of the maneuvers that you're doing is also important. So you don't have to say, Oh, I have my hand on the anterior shoulder and I'm rotating it, you know, with the body. You say, Okay, hey, I'm doing Rubens too. Now I'm doing wood screw, I'm doing reverse wood screw. So um, but yeah, just make sure that you're very specific on your uh, descriptions of the of the heart tones. And honestly, not just for the OSCE, but like I would encourage you, like even when you're like you'll be all be seniors here or very soon, um, I would encourage you to review like the basics and the specifics of heart tones. Like every time you're on labor, like that first day of your labor week, like you should review the red book every single time, uh, just to. One, for your own sake of, of continuing to stay sharp, but then also to make sure that you're holding your interns to really high standards to use their words and not say, oh, yeah, it looks pretty good or, oh, that doesn't look really good. I mean, you'll you'll get to that point where you have that gestalt, but, like, you need to have practiced it a thousand times before you can get to that point. Other comments? Dr. Neal, anything else? Well, I think, I mean, you know, heart rate tracing is spatial on the OSCE is about interpretation, but it's also about communication. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, so when you go to the station, that's, we're looking at a combination of both. We're looking at your ability to read script and interpret it appropriately, but also communicate it to either the attending or the laborist or whoever's appropriate in that situation in a way that matches the importance of that dress. So it's really going like the third year, like a third year medical student, you want to be able to know the heart tones, but then really at your level, you want to be able to interpret it and know what actions you're going to take and be able to relay it to your attending. I can trust you. So you're yeah. going to be sitting across someone and it's going to be a fake case, but if it needs urgency, we want to hear the urgency in your voice. Mm -hmm. The one practice you get before you get to call someone yeah. on the other end, that it does need to be urgent, right? Yeah. So and there are some people's voices who tend to be more calm. And so there's some people that yeah. you have to say, I am concerned. Like, use your words to say, I am concerned. And this is what I'm saying. Some people have very chill voices. Like, you know, <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to be one that's just going to And yeah. And you say, I am concerned. And you could say, hey, 
I mean, that could be a time to say, I'm concerned that this strip looks bad, but then you have to describe like why the strip looks bad, right? Hey, we've been down in the 60s for two minutes, or we've had recurrent variables for the last 20 minutes, or whatever, you know. Does that make sense? The variability. Yeah, or yeah, or the variability has decreased. I have a question about recurrent variables. So like if it's only been 10 10 minutes, but you've had recurrent variables for 10 minutes and before that there were none, technically over the last 20 minutes it's still recurrent because there were none and now there are every time for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So is that you know what I mean? Like does that count or do you wait? You know what I mean? Like for it to technically be recurrent for 20 minutes since the variable started. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean then uh, like if the if you've had them every contraction for the uh -huh. last ten minutes, then you could call that. I mean technically yeah. by the book you could call that because you could go for the last twenty minutes stretch like yeah. you said. Also, it depends on like how deep they are and like where the patient's at. Like it's it's very different if it's a G one that's three that yeah. is having recurrent variables as opposed to a multiple that's like just went from six to nine. Even a G one who's eight, like those G ones will burn you. So like, just realize like, even if they're complete, like there could be hours before delivery, you know? So I think that's one thing I've learned in practice. Two months. Two months. All righty, sweet.